YouTube, welcome back. Today on Kung Fu Science, I'm going to be talking to you about defending a simple one-two, a jab cross. Um, this is a very common attack combination, um, especially in today's martial arts. Um, I feel like every student of every martial art should know how to throw a simple one-two. Uh, well, a real one-two, because it's what you're going to be dealing with the most of. I mean, you know, you got your haymakers too. Like one, two, and haymakers. Those are your like main street attacks as far as striking goes. And you got tackles and grapples. But anyway, uh, one, two, the science behind it is generally to put two punches in the exact same target, right down the middle. Usually the jab is made to feel out the range and to distract you while the heavy shot comes in. Okay? So in this defense, what you're wanting to get to happen is for one you want your partner to throw a real one two at you you can change the speed you can gradually you know work it up it doesn't have to be fast solid you know right away but anyway you want them to step in with their jab and you're going to back up right the jab is a feeler and if it misses the person's really going to overextend with their power hand to make sure they get to you right if they make contact they don't have to step in because they can just hit you again right so you want them to miss on the first one so they really overextend on that second one right so that's kind of what this drill is about you're going to defend the first one by backing up and just parrying and then that second one's going to come in and that's when you take advantage of it so anyway i got a couple of students helping me and uh... i hope you enjoy the video uh, i already explained everything else in the first part of the video we are dealing with a standard one two right i can't do like the normal wing chun responses go ahead and try to come forward because i might run into the second hand if so the combination is correct so we're going to be here and actually take a step back with the first one again and slide down the second one um, <clears throat> some key points here the first one is like a pot jump pot that comes down though the second one is straight in and slides down to the elbow so you want to do that as you're coming forward, okay? Two, one. You might have to sidestep a little. You might have to push off the side a little and get your head out of the way. Um, my footwork is the standard. You can see the feet, yeah? I'm forward like this, and I'm back, and pull. Right? And I go over here on this side. Now from here I can do all sorts of things. Push the head in, grab, do a knee, continue to walk around behind, back leg, other things like that. It's a nice camera, I haven't figured it out yet. Okay, so the <clears throat> next part, right? We've done the first two things, boom, slide in. I hit with the hands, whatever I want, and start turning the head sideways. Reach around behind, I want to tuck his uh, arm into my elbow pit, if you want to call it that. Pull his head down, and now I've got all of this inside of my arm here. Now as I get done with this, I want to be stepping off to the side like this, and I'm going to use a pivot step. Slide around behind and kick the back leg. Now it needs to be done all at once, right? You can't take a turn like that. But the step forward goes with the rest of it. Ah. It all connects into one thing. Um, <clears throat> I do this right side forward so that I can go towards his power hand and get around behind him. And then uh, now, uh, what's the word here? What's the word here? Neutralize his power arm, right? So if he does try to punch you with his other arm, he's got a long way to go. Now, if you come around back here so you can see the back, I'm using the movement from Chum Q. I'm going to put a whole video on just this thing. But once I get back there, I am pushing low on the lower back and pulling with the upper arm all at the same time as putting the leg in. My punches. Like that. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, that's just one simple answer to the one-two. You can do various combinations from there. You don't have to do exactly the way that I defended it. Once you intercept that second fist, you've got all sorts of things that you can play with from there. That just happens to be a more self-defense uh, oriented application. Right, because you know, we got no gloves on. 
The one two comes in, boom! You end the fight by getting close enough where they don't know what to do. You're grappling, you're elbowing, you're kneeing, you're taking them down, right? So, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to let me know in the comments below. Hit the like button, and if it's your first time on the channel, please make sure to subscribe because it really helps us out, gets this channel moving. If you have any specific combinations, strikes that you'd like to see, uh, my variations of defenses, or any scenarios you'd like us to go over, please let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, thank you for watching Kung Fu Science. What's in your Kung Fu?